The world of paleoanthropology is no stranger to bold claims and paradigm-shifting discoveries. Yet, the scientific community was taken aback by a provocative theory proposed by Dr. Juan Schur. He challenged the belief that humans originated in Africa. His alternative, humanity's cradle lies in East Asia. Dr. Schur's journey began amidst East Asia's breathtaking landscapes. His passion for the region's history and biodiversity ignited his research. Years of research led him to a conclusion that would shake our understanding of human evolution. Dr. Schur's theory is built upon meticulous research and multiple lines of evidence. From genetic diversity to fossil records, he places East Asia at the center of human evolution. His work has sparked intense debate, forcing us to re-examine long-held assumptions. For decades, the out-of-Africa theory has reigned supreme, shaping our understanding of human origins. This theory posits that Homo sapiens, our species, first emerged in Africa around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago. These early humans then ventured out of their African homeland, migrating to other continents and eventually replacing existing archaic human populations like Neanderthals. This theory gained widespread acceptance due to a convergence of evidence, primarily from fossil discoveries and genetic studies. The oldest fossils attributed to Homo sapiens have been unearthed in Africa, lending credence to the idea that our species originated there. Genetic analyses have further strengthened this view, suggesting that all modern humans can trace their ancestry back to a single population in Africa. The out-of-Africa theory provided a neat and compelling explanation for the global distribution of humans. It painted a picture of a single origin for our species, highlighting our shared ancestry and interconnectedness. This theory has permeated popular culture, shaping our understanding of our place in the world. However, Dr. Schur's work throws a wrench into this narrative, suggesting that the story of human evolution might be far more complex and nuanced than we previously thought. Dr. Schur's Out of East Asia theory presents a radical departure from the conventional wisdom of the Out of Africa model. He proposes that our Homo sapiens ancestors did not originate in Africa but rather in East Asia, a region teeming with biodiversity and a long history of human habitation. This theory, while controversial, is not without merit. Dr. Schur points to several lines of evidence that he believes support his claims. He contends that East Asia possesses the highest levels of genetic diversity among modern human populations, suggesting a longer evolutionary history in the region. This observation forms the cornerstone of his argument, challenging the traditional interpretation of genetic diversity as a marker of African origins. Dr. Schur doesn't stop there. He delves into the fossil record, highlighting discoveries in East Asia that predate or rival the oldest Homo sapiens fossils found in Africa. These fossils, he argues, exhibit anatomical features that blur the lines between archaic humans and modern humans suggesting a gradual and complex evolutionary transition within East Asia itself. His work challenges us to reconsider the traditional narrative of human evolution and to embrace the possibility of multiple origin points for our species. At the heart of Dr. Schur's argument lies the principle of maximum genetic diversity, MGD, which he posits as a key to unlocking the secrets of human origins. This principle states that the region harboring the greatest genetic diversity within a species is most likely its place of origin. Dr. Schur argues that East Asia exhibits the highest levels of genetic diversity among modern human populations. This diversity, he contends, is a testament to a longer evolutionary history in the region. Just as a tree that has stood for centuries will possess more diverse branches and leaves, so too will a population that has evolved over a longer period exhibit greater genetic variation. This interpretation of genetic diversity challenges the traditional view that associates greater diversity with an African origin. Proponents of the out-of-Africa theory argue that the higher genetic diversity observed in Africa is a result of a larger and more ancient founder population. However, Dr. Schur believes that the MGD principle provides a more parsimonious explanation, suggesting that the cradle of humanity lies where genetic diversity is at its peak, East Asia. Section 5. Echoes of the Past. Fossil Evidence from the East. Dr. Schur presents compelling fossil evidence from East Asia, challenging the idea that the oldest Homo sapiens remains are exclusive to Africa. The Dali skull, found in Shanxi province, is a notable discovery. Dated to about 260,000 years old, it blends archaic and modern features. 
Another find, Homo julurensis from Jurandong, China, dates to around 300,000 years old. These fossils suggest a gradual and complex transition to Homo sapiens. Dr. Schur argues these discoveries challenge the traditional view of human evolution. East Asia may have played a pivotal role in the emergence of Homo sapiens. Section 6. Genetic Bridges. Connecting Ancient Europeans and East Asians. Dr. Schur's research delves into the fascinating realm of ancient DNA, uncovering genetic connections between ancient European populations and their East Asian counterparts. His team's analysis of ancient DNA from European fossils reveals a surprising genetic affinity to present-day East Asian populations. This discovery suggests that there was significant gene flow between East Asia and Europe during the Pleistocene epoch, a period marked by dramatic climatic fluctuations and human migrations. This finding challenges the simplistic view of human migration out of Africa, which often depicts a unidirectional movement of populations. Instead, Dr. Schur's research paints a more complex picture of interconnectedness and interbreeding between ancient human populations across vast geographical distances. These genetic bridges, he argues, provide further evidence to support the idea of an East Asian origin for Homo sapiens. The genetic links between ancient Europeans and East Asians add another layer of complexity to the story of human origins. These findings challenge us to rethink traditional models of human migration and consider the possibility of multiple waves of migration and interbreeding that shaped the genetic tapestry of modern human populations. Section 7. A Scientific Uprising, Controversies and Challenges Dr. Schur's Out of East Asia theory has not been met with universal acclaim. In fact, it has sparked considerable debate and controversy within the scientific community. Many scientists remain skeptical of his claims, citing the weight of existing evidence that supports the out-of-Africa theory. One of the main criticisms leveled against Dr. Schur's theory is that the fossil evidence he presents is open to interpretation. Critics argue that the morphological features he attributes to Homo sapiens in East Asian fossils could be interpreted as representing other hominid lineages or simply variations within archaic human populations. They contend that more conclusive fossil evidence is needed to overturn the established view of an African origin for our species. Another point of contention revolves around the interpretation of genetic data. While Dr. Schur emphasizes the high levels of genetic diversity in East Asia as evidence for an origin there, critics argue that this diversity can be explained by other factors such as population bottlenecks and founder effects. They maintain that the overall pattern of genetic variation still points to Africa as the most likely origin of Homo sapiens. Section 8. Rewriting History. The Implications of an Eastern Origin. If Dr. Schur's Out of East Asia theory were to gain wider acceptance, it would necessitate a significant rewriting of human history as we know it. Our understanding of the timeline of human evolution, the routes our ancestors took to populate the globe, and even the very definition of what it means to be human would be called into question. An East Asian origin for Homo sapiens would challenge the Eurocentric bias that has long permeated the study of human evolution. It would shift the focus from Africa and Europe to East Asia, highlighting the region's crucial role in shaping our species. This shift in perspective could lead to a more nuanced and inclusive understanding of human history, one that acknowledges the contributions of diverse populations to our shared ancestry. Beyond the realm of science, an East Asian origin for humanity could have profound cultural and societal implications. It could challenge existing narratives of identity, belonging, and human connection, prompting us to reconsider our place in the grand tapestry of life on Earth. Section 9. The Journey Continues Unraveling the Mysteries of Our Past The debate surrounding the origins of Homo sapiens is far from settled. While Dr. Schur's Out of East Asia theory has injected a much-needed dose of skepticism and alternative thinking into the field of paleoanthropology, it faces an uphill battle in gaining widespread acceptance. The scientific process, however, thrives on such challenges. It is through rigorous debate meticulous data collection, and the willingness to question established paradigms that our understanding of the natural world advances. Whether or not Dr. Schur's theory ultimately stands the test of time, his work serves as a powerful reminder that the story of human evolution is complex, multifaceted, 
and far from fully understood. As we delve deeper into the fossil record, unlock the secrets hidden within our DNA, and develop ever more sophisticated analytical techniques, we can expect to uncover even more surprises about our ancient past. The journey to understand our origins is ongoing, and it is a journey that promises to be as enlightening